So the news came out just recently, taking a break from the trading day. I'm here at home, uh, basically trading, doing some option trading. And of course, the news came out about Pfizer uh, being, of course, approved by the FDA. And that has been a long standing argument by a lot of the anti vaxxers, you know, saying, how can you mandate, you know, a vaccine that's not even approved by the FDA? And of course, that has always been a faulty argument to lead with primarily because if you think that your local you know governments are doing something fishy then pointing to the fact that a government agency has not approved of a particular medication is an irrelevant argument because they're already working for the government like so it's like leading with those type of arguments are are terrible and that's why i've said in my previous video and i encourage you to watch my previous video where i, I looked in depth at the statistics and the numbers that are coming out of the one of the most vaccinated countries israel israel was the country who led uh, originally in you know mass vaccinating their people that back during december 2020 and we've looked a year later at the data to see if what you know, the Pfizer and, you know, they have all these doctors that come out of the woodwork and say it's 90 something percent effective, etc. And then people come back and say, well, you know, they never said that you couldn't get it and that they never said that you couldn't transmit it. And I want you to listen. This is from the call. This call is going on right now as we speak. And of course, the doctor here is Dr. Peter Marks, MD, Director, FDA Center for um, Biologics Evaluation and Research Team, and he's talking to Janet Woodstock, MD, Acting FDA Commissioner, and you can hear in their own words what they say about the effectiveness. What does it, what does effective mean? Is this just like, uh, you know, are you not are you, are you just gonna not be in the hospital? Are you not gonna be you know sick? Are you only gonna have mild cases? Is this what they refer to? Is this what these agencies are referring to when they tell you the public? about the efficacy because you hit you sit here and you listen to all these different doctors and doctors come out of the, the woodworks you know all these government doctors and they say it's you know it's the best thing since sliced bread and take a listen clinical trial the vaccine was 91 percent effective in preventing covid 19 disease now dr marks will share more information about the data the fda evaluated to come to the approval decision while today's approval includes people ages 16 and older, the vaccine continues to be available under emergency use authorization for individuals 12 through 15 years of age and to provide a third dose for certain immunocompromised individuals. Healthcare providers can continue to use the vaccine on their shelves that was provided under EUA while production of the approved vaccine is under product is underway. The FDA approved vaccine and the EUA authorized vaccine have the same formulation and can be used interchangeably to provide the COVID-19 vaccine series. In remaining true to our commitment to transparency, information about the data that FDA evaluated to come to this decision will be posted on our website. Today's approval means that the American public can have confidence the community is safe and effective and meets FDA's rigorous standards. Please get your COVID-19 vaccine if you have not and help your family and friends get theirs. Thank you. And now I'll turn to Dr. Marks to discuss more about the FDA's process for approving this vaccine. Thank you, Dr. Woodcock. It's a pleasure being here today with all of you. First, I wanna reiterate that this milestone in the fight against COVID-19 uh, has been accomplished by a group of committed public health professionals who have been guided by science in everything that they do and who've worked tirelessly over the past months for everyone's benefit. The FDA's evaluation of this biologics license application was incredibly thorough, and the public can trust that the data evaluated by the FDA on the vaccine's safety, effectiveness, and quality meet the agency's rigorous, globally recognized standards. We reviewed hundreds of thousands of pages of data and information about the vaccine's safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality, and we concluded and conducted inspections of various facilities where the vaccine is manufactured. 
I'd like to share more about our evaluation of the clinical data for this vaccine, which, as Dr. Woodcock noted, is also detailed in many documents that will be available on the FDA's website. First, emergency use authorization for this vaccine, which was issued last December for individuals 16 years of age and older, was based on safety and effectiveness data from a randomized controlled blinded ongoing clinical trial conducted in tens of thousands of individuals. To support the FDA's approval uh, decision today, the FDA reviewed updated data from the clinical trial that supported the emergency use authorization and that included a longer duration of follow-up in a larger patient population. Specifically, the FDA's evaluation of the biologics license application, uh, the agency evaluated effectiveness data from approximately 20,000 vaccine recipients and 20,000 placebo recipients ages 16 and older who did not have evidence of COVID-19 infection within a week of receiving the second dose. As Dr. Woodcock noted, based on the results from the clinical trial, the vaccine was 91% effective in preventing COVID-19 disease. The vaccine all right, and so I wanted you to hear from the very FDA doctors who specifically tell you what does it mean when a person is considered vaccinated, right? So when you take the vaccine and what is what is referred to as you know giving you a giving you immunity, as they said, it is ninety one percent effective, right? Ninety one percent effective in preventing COVID nineteen. So we're going to take a look at Florida. Now, everybody, especially the news, would have you imagine that Florida, like nobody out there vaccinated, right? They're just out there willy-nilly partying it up. They're like, fuck COVID, right? But that's not the case. There's a huge population um, that is vaccinated right here. As you can see, of the 19 million people that live in Florida, 66% of them are vaccinated. Overwhelmingly, those who are geriatric are over 80%. So people who are 60 and above are 80 and 86% vaccinated. The primary people who are, I would say, less, less than 50 are the show are left in 50% are people from the age of 29 and down. And so it just goes to show you that it's not that these people are, are not vaccinated. And of course, post-vaccination, you would expect to see less cases right so all of 2020 a lot of there were a lot of people in florida who were not vaccinated and then eventually because of lack of distribution many of these individuals especially older people you know kind of lined up because you're still going to have your average everyday people even in a red state that are going to go out and still take it because not everybody is you know that right wing you know you're a nut job you're an anti-vaxxer sort of an individual you have a typically have a mix crowd in many of these states even in red states and places like texas as well so with a overall 66 percent population what do the numbers look like in florida well let's take a look so as you can see to as of today today is the 22nd florida has and a seven day average of 212. Looking back a year where there were no vaccines, we'll go back to August. <coughs> see, we'll go back to August 22nd. And you'll see that the average seven day average was on actually on the decline, as you can see by the chart. You can easily Google this information. This isn't information that is obscure. This isn't some sort of, you know, a crazy you know conspiracy theorist website this is literally just type the shit into google and you can see it with your very own eyes how effective right that 91 percent that they refer to about you not catching it now, these are deaths these are not cases these are deaths so i know everything is cases 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 but in terms of deaths and we'll just let's just pretend that all these deaths are are legit every single one of these people and we'll just say every one of these persons legitimately died of COVID-19 every single death certificate was on the up and up there was no fishy business let's just pretend does this look like something that is showing effectiveness especially from what the FDA doctor said is at 91 or 93 percent effectiveness at you contradicting uh, contracting the disease now let's look at the cases at the very least well maybe there are more older people 
And again, I've said previously before that typically when you look at the flu vaccine, the flu vaccine is very ineffective uh, for older patients. Like you can look at that video yesterday. I linked the article uh, as early as 2019 because the flu disappeared in 2020 uh, and probably in 2021. And of course, in 2019, the flu vaccine for patients who were like 60 and over, it was like 20 something percent. That's not very effective in preventing individuals from getting sick, but this has been what people tell you to, to you know, go out there and, and take it. Now, let's look at the cases. At the very least, do we see less cases? And we don't. We actually see almost double, almost triple the amount of cases post-vaccine. Post-vaccine, right? So looking back at August, now, again, the numbers as of the 22nd, the rolling seven day is 23,000 with a spike here of, where is it? It had a one day spike of 56,000 new cases with a seven day average of 29,000. But the most recent data as of today is a seven day average of 23,300. That's before they enter today's data. Now we look back at last year, in August, on August 22nd, their seven day average was less than 4,000. Now, some people will say, oh, they're, maybe they're cooking the books, etc." I can't answer that question either way. But what I can say is that for a area of the country, a state that has a vaccination rate of 66%, these numbers, should seem odd to individuals and people should ask questions. Again, I'm not telling you whether to go out there and take it or not, but to see almost 10 times the number of infected patients should be a cause for concern, especially when you're looking at deaths. And we're not even at the peak right because the peak comes in the following month in january how many patients will how many patients will they see then this is post vaccine this is post vaccine we're at the peak over here they were seeing you know about 100 178 on a day and we're, they're already over that they're already about 10 15% over that and it doesn't look like it's declining it looks still looks like it's it's on the way up and again like i said in my previous video of course i will link that video at the top at some point in this video along with numerous other videos that you are welcome to take it to take a look at now the last article that we're going to take a look at is something here uh, this was recently posted today on twitter where it says more than 75 doctors walk out of south florida hospital rather than treat those who have not taken it as doctors at South Florida Hospital have walked out on their duties to treat sick patients to do a publicity stunt because a number of patients are, are unvaccinated for COVID-19. And so you can read the rest of this is basically, you know, doctors who I guess are upset at the narrative that it's all these people who haven't taken it that are the reason why we're seeing, you know, all, all of this spread, all, the, all these numbers, you know, all these positive cases, all these deaths, etc. This is why. Just moments ago, more than 75 doctors staged a walkout to protest the number of COVID patients coming to the hospitals who have not been oh vaccinated. The thing, hey, let, let's bring in Carrie Sanders, because Carrie, you're in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, at this doctor's walkout. Carrie, what, what, and I know the area very well, what Americans don't understand is for every unvaccinated person that's filling up an ICU bed, that means with a hospital's jam, somebody with a heart attack, and I've known somebody in this position, goes there, has trouble getting in, can't get treatment, can't get a bed. It is a nightmare for the doctors. It is a nightmare for the nurses. And to the doctor's uh, point of view, it's worse yet for sick people that want help from them. 
That is truly reflective of the frustration that you see behind me as these doctors have gathered, some coming off their shifts to come out here, gathering to try to tell people, please, first of all, ignore the nonsense and the absurdities that you're hearing people say at public meetings and recognize the value of what a vaccine will do. 85% uh, of the ICU beds in Florida are full. Now, there are some hospitals that have no space in the ICU. They've turned cafeterias, they've turned conference centers over to beds to house patients because they are so overwhelmed. Dr. JT Snarsky is joining us here. She's one of the doctors. First of all, you hear that woman at the school board saying the absurdity. How does that make you feel and how do you combat it? It's incredibly frustrating because we know vaccines are safe and effective and it's people who go out and talk against them that really go against physicians and medicine and science and it's not the message we want to get across to people. Vaccines are safe and we need to get our communities vaccinated. But a simple Google search by your local physician and a simple looking at the data, I mean, this is coming out of the Department of Health of State Florida. This isn't, this information is not obscure it's not hidden somewhere you know off who knows where as you can see that there are two million one hundred thousand people who have gotten their first dose and ten thousand people ten thousand five hundred who have gotten their second their second dose and of course they say well it's all those first dose people that haven't gotten their second dose or it's all those second dose people that haven't gotten their boosters and it's like i can't do nothing for you you have to look over the empirical information. We're going to look at the data and be able to draw a scientific conclusion. It should be easy for you to understand. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe.